morning guys it is early well it's like 11 something a.m and we're here at my local park or at least the park closest to that's reachable um you might have noticed something a little different about the video i put scripture just before the video started because i like to read a scripture before i get my day started so hopefully that scripture encourages you guys and it's something that you can apply to your daily life so we're here at this park uh it's called esk park um and we're here because we there was a recent nest migration in pokemon go if you don't know what the park looks like let me show you okay and so we're here because like i said there was a nest migration and we want to find out if there is a nest in this park so i'm going to open the game really quickly and we want to figure out whether there's a nest here or not now for those of you who know about this i'm using an application called open street or at least a map called open street and open street is a script that will run uh, based off of google maps it's an algorithm that will, that determines which areas around where you live are likely to have pokemon nests or maybe pokemon spawns or clusters some type of, of nest um, activity so i'm here at this park to find out whether or not there is a nest here so if you give me a second i will open up the game and we will be ready to rock and roll because pokemon go takes forever to load up in the meantime while we're waiting for the game to load up let's talk about this it's about different types of parks and the likelihood of them having nests or the likelihood of them um, having cluster spawns and he does talk about a lot of sports orientated parks so basketball courts or I mean if you're in the, the US uh, football um, football fields or large parks or large green areas where there's grass um, and lots of places where there is open fields so we're here at this open field and for some reason Pokemon Go is taking forever to load up so I'll be right back okay so we're back and I've managed to get the game up and running so let's see how this is working out okay so here we are at the park already there is a Pidgey here um, which I guess is a good sign um, which lets us know uh, if there's any Pokemon in this park now the one thing I have the main issue I have with this particular park is that each area of the park isn't distinguished so over here is the basketball course so we want to go have a look at that um, and the on the sightings every Pokemon within our radius right now is at a Pokestop for some reason that Pidgey is 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 on the small sort of nearby sightings um, so we're gonna catch that because it's the only Pokemon that's here right now that we can catch and I've currently run out of great ball uh, pokeballs so we're using great balls right now and Pidgey just ran away from me um, so yeah okay so here we are we're on this basketball court some of you might remember it from my other video which you can check out up there um, and it was a video about how to do certain things in Pokemon Go especially if you're starting brand new that video is for you guys so here's the basketball court so on open streets this is classified as a basketball court and a likely area where there is a nest uh, but according to Pokemon Go there's nothing right now it could be I got here too early or too late but usually I can see at least from where I live in the opposite direction uh, I can see when Pokemon spawn on the map 
So it would appear that here and the children's park, which we're going to go over to right now, aren't Pokemon spawns. But catch up with me once I get over that side. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about uh, nest spawn locations and stuff is that we don't know if spawn locations are determined by already collected mobile data or it's actively live collected mobile broadcast data. All of these places, like all these houses here and here, should be full of people that have mobile phones or cell phones, including my phone right here, I'm broadcasting. It should be pulling from me as I walk through this park. But it seems that the, the algorithm that Niantic has doesn't really work that way. So there's still some tweaks and changes despite the fact that Niantic talked about opening, uh, seeing more Pokemon spawning in rural areas or suburbs. I'm in a rural area or a suburb and I still don't have Pokemon going spawns. So that's kind of it for this video guys. I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated because I wanted to give you guys a video where you would be able to see real tangible evidence of Pokemon spawning in suburb type areas like where I am right now but that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment so I'm gonna check again for another nest and I'll be back with another video hopefully Friday uh, and we'll see what we can do so thanks for watching this video guys don't forget to subscribe if you're new and also tick the bell symbol so you know when I upload and like the video because that helps me a lot too and have a good day god bless peace okay guys so we're back i'm back at home so the conclusion of today is after visiting both the basketball court and the local little park there is no nest at that park so we're gonna have to hit open streets again and have a look at that map run the script and see where else around me is likely to have Pokemon nests. I will leave a link in the description for you guys to check out that map and use it for yourselves. I was pretty excited about doing that today because it really makes hunting for Pokemon and looking for them a lot easier. I kind of wish Niantic had something like that implemented where you could sort of run a check um, on where Pokemon nests are. Now, most of you will be saying, yeah, but what about the Silk Road Nest Atlas, which I'll also leave a uh, link in the description for. The Nest Atlas is awesome, it's great, it gets the job done for nests that are already well known, unless you discover a new one. So, Open Streets map script works really well for finding unverified nests and then verifying them and then now adding those to the Silk Road map. So, if I can find any other nests that are actually active, a lot more than the ones we looked at today, uh, then I will definitely add those to to the Silk Road Atlas. So I just wanted to PS for this video. So I'll see you guys in Friday's video. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all you new subscribers. Don't forget to like this video and uh, tell your friends about it. God bless. Peace. And you can't just say